Hello, I am Seema and welcome to part 12 of the chapter Equilibrium. In the previous part, that is part 11, I introduced the subtopic, the applications of equilibrium constant. Moving ahead with this uh, discussion, I told you that there are three different ways or places where we use, where we apply the equilibrium constant. The first is to determine the extent of a reaction, to determine the direction in which the reaction is proceeding at that particular moment and to calculate the equilibrium concentrations of different reactants and products using the equilibrium constant. So uh, I will now discuss the first point here that how do we determine the extent of a reaction on the basis of equilibrium constant or how do we get an idea of the extent of a reaction. When we say extent of a reaction, if you remember I told you that you have reactants and you have products. And when we think of equilibrium, we, uh, our first imagination would be that the, the concentration of the reactants and products are almost the same and there's a balance between them like a beam balance. But that is now not how the equilibrium is. The reaction proceeds in a direction. Let us say we started with the reactants and initially we had no products. And the reaction proceeds, some, in some reactions, according to the conditions, the reaction proceeds almost to completion, that the products are almost formed and very little reactants are left. And therefore, we can calculate the, and the equilibrium is established. And when we calculate the equilibrium constant for such a reaction, how, how do you calculate the equilibrium constant? Equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of the products divided by the concentration of the reactants. So if you have a large quantity of products and very little reactants, you will get a large value of equilibrium constant. On the other hand, if the equilibrium was established when the reactants started reacting and they reacted just a little to form only a little product and a lot of reactant was left behind, yet equilibrium was established. Now, the equilibrium constant in this case, the products are in the numerator and the concentration of reactants are in the denominator, which is high. Therefore, the value of equilibrium constant for such a reaction would be very, very low. So it tells us when the equilibrium constant is very low, it tells us that the concentration of the reactants is high. It means the reaction did not proceed too much and it hardly occurred. But if the value of equilibrium constant is really large, it gives us an idea that um, the concentration of the products is high, which means that a lot of product has been formed and the reactant has almost been used up. And that is why the reaction, we, from that we uh, judge that the reaction may have almost completed or is almost proceeding towards completion. And when you have the concentrations of both the reactants and the products almost equal at that time we believe that the reaction uh, the equilibrium was established almost halfway that is half of the uh, concentration of the reactants and products is almost equal so we'll say that the reaction or the equilibrium was established almost somewhere um, in the middle so let us now understand this what are the values that we look for and when do we uh, mathematically how do we or rather what value will tell us how much of the um, reaction has occurred or what is the extent of a reaction. So we say that the numerical value, the actual value in numbers of K indicates the extent of a reaction, that how much of the reaction has occurred. But remember, the numerical value of K does not tell us how long it took for the reaction, for the equilibrium to be established. So the numerical value of K gives us no idea of the rate of the reaction. It only gives us an idea of the extent of the reaction. This should be clear to us. Now, how do we calculate equilibrium constant? Equilibrium constant is equal to the concentration of the products, I've written that as P, divided by the concentration of the reactants. Therefore, you could say that equilibrium constant is directly proportional to the concentration of the products, which means that if the concentration of the products is high, the value of equilibrium constant will be high. And if the concentration of the products is low, equilibrium constant would be low. The value of equilibrium constant would be low. And it is inversely proportional to the, to the concentration of the reactants. You see, the reactants are in the denominator. So the more the concentration of the reactants, the smaller will be the value of K because 
the larger value is in the denominator. So, if K has a very small value, it means the concentration of reactants is high. So, we say that K is directly proportional to the concentration of the products and inversely proportional to the concentration of the reactants. If the value of K is high, it implies that the concentration of the products is high and if the value of K is low, it implies that the concentration of the reactants is high. So what is this value that we should look for when we are judging, when we look at the value of Kc? What values tell us whether the reaction has occurred to completion, almost to completion, or has it not occurred at all, or is it somewhere in between? When is the value of equilibrium constant equal to 1? At equilibrium constant equal to 1, the concentration of P and R, both these values should be the same. So when the concentrations of the reactants and products are equal, at that time, the equilibrium constant has a value of 1. And at that time, we assume that 50% of the reaction has occurred, assuming that the stoichiometric coefficients and the number of moles on both the sides is equal. So the, constant, the uh, value of K, when it is 1, we would assume that 50% of the reaction has occurred. Therefore, if the value of Kc is greater than a large value of 10 to the power 3, if it is more than 10 to the power 3, that is 1000, then we say that for such a reaction where the value of Kc is 10 to the power 3, the concentration of products must be very high. And that is why the products in this reaction should predominate. That is, more of the product should be present. And this dis tells us that the reaction proceeds to near completion, that the reaction is almost completed. Therefore, the concentration of the reactants left now is very little and the concentration of products is very, very high. Because if we started with the reactants only, then the equilibrium was established when the value of equilibrium constant was 10 to the power 3. A lot of product had been formed and very little reactant was left behind. Examples of such reactions which are occur almost to completion or nearly to completion are hydrogen and oxygen combined together at 500 Kelvin to give you 2 moles of water. Kc for this has a value of 2.4 into 10 to the power 47 which is really really high. So at 500 from this we assume that the Kc is very high. So the equilibrium when it was established almost all of hydrogen and oxygen had reacted at 500 Kelvin to give you water and hardly any hydrogen and oxygen was left. Similarly, when hydrogen combines with chlorine at 300 Kelvin and you get 2 HCl, for this reaction also, the value of Kc is 4 into 10 to the power 31, which again shows that the value, the concentration of the products is really, really high and hence the reaction has almost proceeded to completion. And the third example of this kind is when hydrogen and bromine combine at 300 Kelvin to give you hydrogen bromide. And Kc for this reaction is 5.4 into 10 to the power 18. So out of these three values, this is the highest and this is the least. So which do you feel has, the, uh, has proceeded maximum towards completion? It is the first reaction. The higher the value of Kc, it shows the more is the concentration of the product in comparison to the concentration of the reactant. Right? And therefore the ratio is larger. Then comes the second situation. If equilibrium constant Kc is less than 10 to the power minus 3, if we said it is greater than 10 to the power minus 3, we believe that a lot of product has been formed. But if it is less than 10 to the power minus 3, it means the reactant's concentration is so high that we are getting a value of minus 1000. So that is uh, 10 to the power minus 3, 1 upon 1000. So, which is very, very low. So, this shows that the reactants predominate and the reaction has proceeded rarely, which means hardly any reaction has taken place. And just as soon as the reaction started, the equilibrium was established. And therefore, the concentration of the reactants is very, very high and reactants are in the denominator. That makes the value of Kc very, very low. Examples of this kind of reaction, that is where Kc is less than 10 to the power minus 3 would be water, the opposite of 
of the formation of water. When water dissociates at 500 Kelvin into hydrogen and oxygen, it has a value of Kc is equal to 4.1 into 10 to the power minus 48. Right? And this is such a such a low value which shows that very little water dissociates and at 500 Kelvin and the equilibrium is established for this reaction. Also, you have nitrogen and oxygen combining to give you nitrogen oxide and at 298 Kelvin. For this reaction, the value of Kc is 4.8 into 10 to the power minus 31, which is also the negative 31 tells you is a very, very small value, which means the concentration of the reactants is high, very, very large and it's in the denominator and the concentration of the product is very, very low and that's why you get such a small number. Now, when we say that 10 to the power 3, above this is reactions which occur to completion. And 10 to the power minus 3 is where the reaction has hardly occurred. Then any value between these two, that is 10 to the power 3 and 10 to the power minus 3, would be where we will say the reaction has occurred to a great extent and both the concentrations of the reactants and products are comparable. They will be e If they are equal, then the value of Kc would be 1. But if they are between 10 to the power 3 and 10 to the power minus 3, we say it's uh, the reaction has occurred to a large extent and the concentrations of the reactants and products are comparable. That is almost quite equal. So if Kc is between <coughs> 10 to the power minus 3 and 10 to the power plus 3, we say appreciable um, appreciable reaction has occurred and concentrations of both reactants and products are present in the reaction mixture. Examples of this kind of reaction would be hydrogen and iodine at 700 Kelvin give you hydrogen iodide and Kc for such a reaction has a value of 57. 57 is neither as uh, high as a thousand nor as low as uh, one upon thousand and therefore it, it falls between these. And it is a reaction where you, when equilibrium is established, <coughs> you will have the concentrations of both HI and hydrogen and iodine in the reaction mixture in comparable uh, ranges. And you would be able to calculate the concentrations of both the reactants and products because they are enough and can be measured. Similarly, N2O4 at 25 degrees Celsius gives you twice NO2 and the equilibrium constant for this reaction is 4.64 into 10 to the power minus 3. I told you if it is less than 10 to the power minus 3, then we say that the concentration of the reactants is very high. But this is 10 to the power minus 3, so it falls in that range where you have comparable amount of reactants and products. So you could make this scale, you know, uh, an imaginary scale. If these are the products and these are the reactants and the concentration of, when the concentration of reactants is very high, it means that there is negligible reaction that has taken place. And if the value of Kc is one, it means the reaction has occurred to half. The concentration of the reactants and the concentration of products is almost equal. But if the, the concentration, I mean, if value of Kc is 10 to the power minus 3, then and 10 to the power plus 3, and within this range, we say it is comparable. It is almost equal. A little higher or a little lower makes no difference. The concentrations of reactants and products are comparable. And hence, we say the reaction has, uh, equilibrium has established when almost half the reaction has been uh, completed. But if the value is less than 10 to the power minus 3, then the concentration of reactants is very, very high. And the higher you go up, you get concentration of products. When the concentration of products is extremely large, it means the reaction has proceeded almost to completion. And this is when the value of Kc is greater than 10 to the power plus 3. So this is how, just looking at the value of Kc, we can predict the extent of a reaction. So this was the first application of uh, the equilibrium constant. So with this I'll finish this video. If you found it helpful, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, recommend it to your friends and please keep returning for more videos in chemistry. Thank you for watching and bye-bye for now.